Which one of these giant cats is bigger? And how do they compare in terms of personality and price? Let's find out. The Controversy the title of the world's biggest cat has been indisputably held by the Maine Coon until the arrival of Savannah's. You see, Maine Coons are an old breed, unlike Savannah's, which recently gained recognition. If you didn't know, Savannah's were created by mixing a wild feline, the Serval, with domestic cats. The Serval is way bigger than domestic cats. That's why creating the Savannah breed was a strenuous process. Also, males are sterile up to the fifth or sixth generation, complicating matters. Maine Coons, on the other hand, are a naturally occurring breed. They almost went extinct at one point, which drastically limited their gene pool. And here's where the controversy lies. F1 savannas, meaning savannas that directly descend from servals, are typically taller and thus bigger than Maine Coons. They weigh similarly to a big Maine Coon. F2 savannas grow pretty large as well. But here's the catch. Savannas must be at least four generations apart from servals or F4 to be considered purebred. The early generation status is unclear, as they have a significant amount of wild blood. In in some states and countries, owning these individuals is illegal or highly restricted, as they're not considered domestic. Anyway, since early generation savannas are hybrid, I think the Maine Coon is the world's biggest domestic cat breed. Still, I would love to hear your opinion on this. But how big do Maine Coons and savannas get in the first place? Maine Coons usually weigh between 12 and 22 pounds, and some males reach higher weights. Maine Coons consistently held the record for the world's longest cat and longest whiskers. First generation savannas, or F1, also reach impressive sizes. They usually weigh between 19 and 22 pounds and can be as tall as 16.4 inches, a bit taller than Maine Coons. Later generations are smaller, with F5 and lower individuals being the size of a regular house cat. So if you want a big kitty, go for a Maine Coon or an F1 savanna. Just know, if you choose an F1 to F4 savanna, you're more likely to get a male, as these fellows are sterile. Let's briefly discuss their appearance before moving on to their personalities. Maine Coons come in most colors and patterns, except for a few. Savannas, however, come in four colors. All of them have spots, a tribute to the Cerval's pattern. A tiny percentage of savannas might display rosettes, because bangles were briefly used when creating the breed. However, rosettes are considered faults in savannas. Savannas are short-haired, while Maine Coons are way fluffier. Moving on, we can notice tremendous differences between these breeds' body structures. Savannas are tall and slim, with elongated legs and have a wilder look. Their head is small for their bodies, a trait inherited from Cervals. Maine Coons, on the other hand, are massive, heavily boned, and more muscular. So it all depends on what type of cat you prefer. I think they both look majestic. By the way, I have dedicated videos on these breeds. Make sure to check them out after this video. Personality Maine Coons are active and affectionate fellows and can sometimes be quite mischievous. Some are lazier, but overall the Maine Coon is a breed with a higher than average energy level. That being said, they're laid back, adaptable, and intelligent. Maine Coons aren't aggressive as they have a sweet temperament. Some savannas, on the other hand, are a different story. Early generation savannas that haven't been properly socialized can display aggressive behavior. That's why it's crucial to get them from a respectable breeder. It's even better to get them from a breeder with kids and dogs. If the cat has been adequately socialized, aggression won't be an issue. Still, early generation savannas, including the well-socialized ones, are more fearful than domestic cats and display defensive behavior toward new people. Additionally, early generation savannas are highly active and require tons of stimulation. Later generations aren't typically fearful, which is awesome. However, they too have a high level of energy. Savannas are very active and require more playtime than Maine Coon. All savannas, just like Maine Coons, are brilliant. They quickly learn your habits and can easily manipulate unaware humans. On the plus side, they can learn tricks and go on leash walks. Which one would be better for a family with kids? Well, I don't recommend F1 and F2 savannas if you have very young children. If you really want one, make sure to not leave these cats alone with children. I talk more about this topic in my Savannah 101 video. Later generation savannas and Maine Coons are fantastic choices for families with older children as they're playful and active. However, I think Maine Coons do a bit better since they're more laid back than savannas. Maine Coons are great if you have small kids, but you should never let your toddler annoy your cat. Which breed would do better if you're not working from home? Sadly, both breeds can become mischievous if bored. That being said, savannas are more active and require more attention. That's why I don't recommend them at all if you're away for most of the day. On the other hand, Maine Coons can do better, but not great. I highly suggest getting two Maine Coons instead of one in this case. Still, the best idea is to look for other less active and more independent cats. Which breed is more suited for active people? 
Savannas, especially early generations, are best for extremely active people. Later generations are also brilliant options. Maine Coons are less active, but they still make great choices. Sadly, neither is suited for people looking for couch potatoes. These are cats you definitely need to play with. Which one is suited for a smaller space? The short answer is neither. Savannas and Maine Coons alike need big homes as they're active. The bigger the cat, the larger the home. That being said, female Maine Coons might do okay in smaller spaces as they don't grow as large as males. Still, it's not advisable. By the way, you can learn the differences between a male and a female Maine Coon here. Also, I highly suggest getting a Maine Coon or an early generation savanna only if you have the space for a catio. Which one gets along better with other cats and dogs? Maine Coons can get along with other cats just fine, but you'll have to be careful if you want a male. I explain why in my male versus female Maine Coon video. If you have dogs, males will probably do better. I only recommend early generation savannas if you take a young kitten that has been socialized and introduced to other cats and dogs, in case you have a dog. Additionally, your current pet should have a high energy level, just like the savanna. Later generations are great options for both dogs and cats, as long as their energy level matches. If you're still in love with huge savannas, hold your horses, as their price will most likely put you off. I'll talk about that in just a bit. What food type do they need? A good quality cat food is excellent for Maine Coons and suits their needs perfectly. Just consider that bigger cats need higher amounts of food, which you'll need to pay for. On the other hand, some breeders recommend savannas, especially earlier generations, to be on a partially raw diet. Make sure to consult the breeder regarding your savannas diet. Health issues and medical bills. Maine Coons are, unfortunately, prone to developing the infamous HCM. They can also develop other health conditions. A great way to make sure you'll have the money for the potential vet bills is to get a great pet insurance plan, such as the one offered by Pet Plan. On the other hand, savannas aren't known for being prone to any health issues. They seem to be sturdy, healthy cats. By the way, I have a video all about HCM if you're interested in learning more about it. At the end of the day, no one can guarantee your kitten won't have health issues. It's a risk you'll have to take. Price. Here's where things get crazy. Maine Coons cost about the same as any other pedigreed cat. On the other hand, F1 savannas cost about $20,000. Yep, you heard that right. F2 savannas are cheaper, but still very expensive. In Europe, savannas are less pricey, which is excellent. Things settle down if you choose a purebred one, as they cost between $1,000 and $4,000. Be very careful where you get your kitten from, as there are a lot of scammers that don't care about the well-being of the cats. These people hold cats in deplorable conditions and allow sick individuals to mate. I always recommend adopting a cat if you want a furry feline friend, but if you're determined to buy one, make sure to look for a respectable breeder and never get a cat without visiting the cattery. Conclusion Neither breed is a good option if you want a couch potato. However, if you're looking for an active and affectionate companion, go for a Maine Coon. If you want a more energetic fellow, choose a later generation savanna. Go for the early generations only if you're sure you can take care of these cats. Of course, you should also keep in mind the other topics we discussed. If you want to treat your cat, there's some super cool stuff for your cat in the description. Many thanks to lovely savanna cats for letting us use their videos and helping us with the information provided. Be sure to check out their cattery and YouTube channel. And now, I think you'll love this video about savannas or this one in which I compare male and female Maine Coons. See you there!